Okay, hi everyone. Let's take a look at this NPV and IRR problem. Uh, I'll read it to you. The problem appears right there. Maybe it's best that I highlight that in yellow. Your brother wants to borrow $10,250 from you. He has offered to pay you back $12,000 in a year. If the cost of capital of this investment opportunity is 8%, what is its NPV? Should you undertake the investment opportunity, calculate the IRR and use it to determine the maximum deviation allowable in the cost of capital estimate to leave the decision unchanged. Okay, so let's get rid of some of these for now. And let's work the problem. Okay, so you can see I'm working it in, in Excel first, and I've worked the solutions down below here. Over here, I'll give you the solutions in a formula approach. But I like to lay out the timeline. So to me, uh, maybe I should write justify these. Uh, the time is now. We, we, we ca shell out $10,250 $10, in a year from now, we get $12,000 back. Cost of capital is 8%. All right, so first let's calculate the NPV, and I'll show you how I calculated that. I took the NPV formula, and then I add back in the period zero cash flow. So let's just work this one from scratch, and I'll show you how to, how to do that. What I typically do is I come up here to the insert function bar, or you can do it right here. You can watch it in both places, and I type equal NPV, hit the left parenthesis, then I hit the insert function, and it calls up these function arguments. Okay, where's the rate given? It's given right there, 8%. It's our cost of capital. And then value 1 is the cash flow appearing at the end of the first period. So we only have 1, $12,000. Now, at that point, all you have is the net present value of the future cash flows. The cash flow, in this case, is an inflow, 12000 And that present value is $11,100. $11.11. But that's not the NPV. That's just the present value of the future cash flows. To turn it into an NPV, you have to also consider the cash flow that occurs right now, which is a 10,250 outflow. So we just add that to the NPV formula and we get $861. Okay? So $861 if the cost of capital is 8%. This means this opportunity in constant dollars will improve your wealth by not in constant dollars in today's dollars will improve your wealth by eight hundred and sixty one dollars and eleven cents all right now to calculate IRR and I'll do that from scratch just type in equal IRR left parenthesis then I come up here hit the insert function and it says well what are the values now in this case Excel doesn't care about does it start at the end of the first period it just wants to know what are, the, what are the cash flows spaced out equally over time? And we only have two, C8 to C9. It wants a guess. Give it the cost of capital if you have it. Uh, by the way, in every financial application I've ever worked, even if you left it off, you will get the exact same number. Just thought I'd point that out. So that comes out to be 17%. 17, uh, 17 okay? So... The next thing they ask you is, what's the maximum deviation? And I like to use the less technical term for this. Uh, this is the wiggle room. In other words, um, what's the maximum devi deviation allowed in the cost of capital to leave the decision unchanged? Well, this is really designed to, t to help you understand the relationship to NPV and IRR. IRR is simply the rate of return you must use to force the cost of capital to zero. So if you had to calculate uh, the deviation, all you have to do is subtract out the cost of capital from the IRR. So the difference between 1707 and 8% uh, is 9.07. Okay? And if you wanted to prove that, you could put the cost of capital in as 17.07 and you'll see the NPV will go to zero or close to it if there's rounding. Okay? So see, it's at 28 cents when I did that. If I put it back to 8%, you get 9.07. Okay, now, that's the solution. If, by chance, you wanted to see this solution formula-wise, yeah, you can do it here. NPV would be equal to uh, the cash flow in period 1 divided by 1 plus R minus the cash flow in period 0. 
Okay, so you can follow through the math and work it. Now, since it's positive, it says you should take the deal. It's a positive. Uh, it increases your wealth. Let me get rid of this. And then the IRR, you take C1 over, or C sub 1 over C sub 0, minus 1. So 12,000 divided by 10,250, subtract 1, you get 17%. And then you just compare the two numbers, the 17% to the 18%, you get 9.07. Okay, so that's just a quick and brief illustration of NPV and IRR. Hope that was helpful. Thank you.